Here is how to complete and submit your final essay in the Twine format. All right, first of all, this is just a standard essay, really. Okay, you've got your essay questions on Blackboard, and the primary thing that you need to do for this essay is just to write an essay, the same way that you would write an essay for any other English class. You need to have your introduction, your body paragraphs, your conclusion, and the vast majority of your grade for this is going to be how well do you make your argument, all the standard ways that English essays are graded. Um, as a little twist, I just want you to submit it to us, to me and the TAs in the Twine format, um, basically so that you can say that you've worked with it. Another way that I am sneakily trying to get you to put on your CVs that you have some experience with um, producing electronic files. Um, and HTML files, for instance, so you have just a tiny bit of computational experience. Um, I'm also doing this so that if you are interested in doing something really um, adventurous in presenting your essay in, say, a nonlinear format, uh, a choice-based format, if you're interested in incorporating uh, non-textual media like images and videos, that you can do so. Um, so the way that this is going to work overall is, first of all, you pick your essay topic, you write your essay, it's 1250 to 1500 words in length. Um, write it all, I'd probably use like a word processor, Google Docs or Microsoft Word to write the essay, uh, and then you're going to put it into the Twine format. So there's only... Uh, I need you to do three things in Twine. Um, you need to have uh, at least three passages. One passage that is the essay, one passage um, that is your work cited, and then something called a born digital statement, which basically it's short, it's only 250 words or so, um, and this is where you explain your rationale for why you presented your Twine essay the way that you did. Um, like I said, you can just do basically like an essay in web format. It doesn't need to do anything flashy, um, but you just need to explain that. So. How do you intend for your reader to navigate your essay? Like, do you want them to just, for instance, read the whole essay and then click on Works Cited and click on Born Digital Statement? That's totally fine if that's what you want to do. But this is especially useful if you've done something complicated. Like, I want readers to go through and make decisions um, and every it'll lead to different possible endings and outcomes. Like, we need to know that as graders to understand why you put this together the way that you did. Um, which born digital affordances did you employ? Did you have interactivity, nonlinearity, multimedia? Um, why did you use them? Again, it's totally fine if your answer is I just have text um, and I decided to use only text and do nothing uh, interactive, um, nothing nonlinear. And then here, how is your Twine essay different from a traditional paper essay, uh, if at all? Uh, and maybe it won't be. So what new things does it allow you to do, if anything? So like I say here, you will not lose marks for building a very simple uh, Twine essay that's just three passages. Just explain why you did it that way. Um, you won't be punished for keeping this pretty simple. All right, so now I'm going to show you in this Twine video, um, I'm going to show you how to do it, how to put your essay into Twine, and I'm going to build in complexity. So first I'm going to show you like the easiest stuff that you could possibly do. Then I'm going to tell you if you want to get a little bit more complicated, do this. And then if you want to get a little bit more complicated, do this. So follow along. You might only need to watch, you know, like a minute of this actual video. So the first thing that you're going to do, like uh, I showed you in class the other day, is you're going to go to twinery.org. That's where Twine lives. So don't bother downloading it for this assignment unless you intend on being pretty hardcore about it. If you're going to do the simple version, just click on use it online. Just reminding me that I could, okay, we're not going to do donate, um, we're not going to do anything like this. So when you open this, you're going to see nothing. I've got a little sample game that I made here um, last year, but uh, you're going to see nothing, so you're going to do plus story. Now, I have a specific way I want you to save your file name, so you might as well just call it this right now. Um, first, say which question, which essay question you did. So if I'm going to do like question one, I'm going to do Q1 and then an underscore, and then my last name, and then an underscore, and then my essay title. For this, I'm going to do this one called Wolf as Model Builder, which is based on an essay that I actually wrote. 
uh, earlier this year, but even if you don't know your title at this point, you can change this later, or once you save it, you can edit the file name. But to make things easy, I'm going to call this story this rather boring looking title, Q, and then my question number, last name, and then title of essay. All right, so once you do that, you're taken into your actual story. Okay, so I'm going to here, I'm going to give you the easiest possible way of doing this. I'm going to put the essay into this passage, then I'm going to do my work cited and born digital statement. Um, passages next. So first in order you can double click on the passage to edit it or you can click on this little uh, pencil icon either way does the same thing. I don't really like the title untitled passage that feels a little uh, basic to me so I'm going to call this like essay because this is where my essay actually lives. Uh, remember that players readers won't see these titles that's just for you to keep things organized um, but they will see everything you put into the body. So, okay, let's pretend that this is my essay, um, and this thing over here is an essay that I wrote this summer and gave it a conference. So I'm just gonna cut and paste it in. I'm going to select all and copy it, and then I'm gonna go in here uh, and I'm going to paste. So as you can see, now my whole essay is just in this, uh, in this Twine passage. So if I were to close this now and hit play, um, you'll see there's my whole essay. Not looking particularly awesome, but it's fine. Uh, there's my essay in Twine format. So you might end up doing something very much like this, um, just copying it in. Okay, so we're almost there for the simple version. The only thing that I need to do is to uh, separate the work cited into a separate passage. Okay, so at the end of my actual essay, I'm just going to remember in Twine, the way that you make a link is by doing square brackets. So I'm going to write work cited at the end, and I'm going to surround that by double square brackets like that. Um, and then underneath that, I'm going to put born digital statement. These are the two links that you must have that everyone needs to have. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this works cited, and I'm going to uh, cut it out of there. And I'm going to paste it into the works cited passage. So once I've done this at the bottom of my essay, done these two links, I close it and Twine magically knows that I want to have these two other passages called Works Cited and Born Digital Statement. So I will edit the Works Cited and just paste in what I just cut out. So this needs to be in MLA format. And you can see I've got some kind of funky formatting down here. So I'll just clean that up a little bit um, to make it all look uniform, but that looks pretty good to me. We're not going to be sticklers about like indentation. Do not worry about indentation. Okay. Seriously. Um, you don't need to worry about it. So just do right work cited, um, at the top of the passage so that people can see it's a work cited and then include all the works that you cited. For a lot of you, this might just be one or two things. Don't worry about it. That's fine. But you do need to have this as a separate passage. The born digital statement, um, I'm not going to actually write one, but just to have some text to throw in there, I'm going to um, cut and paste in my description. So let's say that I will eventually actually write something here. So now the way that my Twine essay will look is, um, there's my title up there, um, there's my essay. Yeah, there's not cool indentation, but again, don't worry about fancy things like having proper indentation, it's totally fine. Uh, when you get to the bottom, you have links to Works Cited and Born Digital Statement, and so you click on Works Cited, and I get the Works Cited, perfect, done. Um, and I click on Born Digital Statement, and here you'll actually have your real Born Digital Statement, but whatever, so that's structurally, that's the minimum, that's what you need to have, your three passages, and that's fine. All right, there's one other thing that you need to do, and that is inc everything in italics, I want you to indicate in italics. When you copy your essay, like when I copied my essay into Twine, all formatting was lost, like bold, underline, fonts, all that stuff. It just goes, unfortunately. 
because this world here is a world of plain text. So because in the MLA format, it's important to indicate things like titles in italics, um, I, I need you to use the HML tag for italics to surround all titles or anything else in your essay that needs to be indicated in italics. This is just one way that I want you to learn how HTML tags work. Um, so it's just a single tag that you need to do, but throughout your whole essay and your work cited, everywhere that things need to be in italics, go and do the following thing, okay? See like here is a title. I'll just show you one example with this title. This title, I want it to show up in italics. If right now I go play and I read my essay, I will see that this is not in italics. So it's not in MLA format, just as this title should be in MLA format, should be in italics and it's not. So I've made a MLA formatting error. So the way that I make it MLA format uh, and make it italics is I find the text and I do an open tag of EM, a start tag. That's the HTML tag for italics. And then I close the tag forward slash EM within the pointy brackets. I'll just do this one so I can have two examples for you. Forms I also want to show up in italics. And then I would go through the whole essay and everything that needs to be in italics. I'm gonna surround them with those EM tags. EM stands for emphasis, by the way. So now when I play it, um, sure enough, that's showing up in italics. That's good, okay? So you have to do that for your works cited too. Go here, everything that needs to be in italics, put it in italics. So that's the one HTML formatting thing. All right, so the simple case, you're done. You would now save it. This is the last step. Um, click on the title and say, publish to file. You'll see that right now, um, Chrome downloaded it um, as an HTML finder. So I'm gonna go HTML file. I'm gonna go find that in my finder. There it is uh, in downloads. So um, because I named my story Q1 underscore last name underscore title, the file already has the proper file format. Um, it's, it's an HTML file that it saves it as. Um, it's all named perfectly. By the way, if I were to double click this, it would just open it up in my default browser, which on this computer um, is Safari, uh, and I would be able to play it. Okay, so there it is. There's my HTML file, all done, all looking good. Um, now I'm gonna upload it onto Blackboard. So the way to upload it, click on Final Essay from the Assignments page do April 3rd, points possible 100. Okay, um, attach files. I go find wherever I had saved it. In this case, it was still in my downloads folder. Open, and I'm done, submit. That's it, the whole essay is contained in there in this toying game. Okay, so if you're looking for the easy way of doing it, that's it, you've watched enough of this video, um, you can stop watching. But if you're interested in continuing, stay with me and I will show you more stuff. Okay, so let's say, the first thing I'll show you if you wanna make a more complicated structure than just having your whole essay in one passage. Well, you can probably imagine it's not terribly complicated. Um, you just make a bunch of passages, um, include a bunch of links in there. One rule that I have for the assignment is I want your work cited in your Born Digital Statement to appear on the very first page. That's just so when we're reading it and marking it, we don't have to like navigate to some weird part of your uh, essay to find that. So I'm gonna take these links, uh, I'm gonna cut them, and I'm gonna put them at the top of my essay. So now the first thing, they'll see the title, um, they'll see these links, um, and then let's say I want to be like, begin essay, or like begin reading essay. All right, so that way, if I, if I were to do this and close it, it would just create um, a new passage called begin reading essay, and then I could, you know, take this, cut it, and stick it into begin reading essay and format however I want. 
If you're staying with me, you might be interested in some advanced tricks, and here's a really useful advanced trick. Um, you can differentiate between what the player sees and clicks on, the text that they see and click on, and then the actual passage name that this link points to by using something called the pipe key. The pipe looks like this. It looks like a straight bar, uh, a straight vertical bar. You'll find it in your keyboard if you hit shift and then the key above enter or return. Um, shift, uh, it's the uh, backslash key. So that's where you'll find the pipe and yeah, it looks like that, a vertical line. So if I write something like passage one, here, uh, now instead of creating a passage called begin reading essay, uh, Twine will create a passage called passage one, um, but the reader will see this to click on. They'll see begin reading essay. So this will make more sense when I now close this. Um, you'll see that, yes, Twine has created a new passage called passage one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my essay and I'm going to cut it out of this opening title passage. Cut. And so now my first passage is just going to be kind of like a menu screen. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to paste in the essay into passage one. So now it'll look like this when I play it. Exciting menu screen. Do I want the works cited? OK, there they are. Or do I want to begin reading essay? All right. And there it is. So let's say that I wanted to do something like every paragraph is its own passage instead of, the, or instead of the whole essay being in one passage. So I could do something like, OK, there's the first paragraph, ends right there. And I might want to include, like, next is what the user sees and clicks on. And then it will take you to passage two, something like that. So I'll take all of this now and cut it, close this. So now is a new link called passage two, and I'm going to paste in everything that I just had. And you can see that this procedure will go on and on and on until I've got one passage for each one of my paragraphs. Uh, and here I'm just showing a very linear structure, but you can have options, you know, like instead of just having one choice, instead of proceeding to the next paragraph, I can choose which paragraph I wanna see. Uh, and you can go as crazy as you want with this when you create your essay. So this version now, it looks like this, something like begin reading essay, uh, read one paragraph, click next, it takes you to next, and so on. So that's what you're gonna wanna do if you wanna make a complicated multi-passage setup. And I think once you start doing, once things get complicated at all, you're gonna wanna know that trick about the pipe, uh, distinguishing between what the reader clicks on. Like especially imagine, let's say every paragraph you want the word next to be the thing that someone clicks on. Well, you can't have a bunch of different passages called next. You can only have one called next, so then the passage one, passage two, passage three thing would be useful because each one would have its own unique name. Okay. So there's the complicated structure. Next thing you might want to do, probably many of you will want to do this. Let's say you want to put like an image or a YouTube video into your game. So I'll tell you right now, uh, the best way of adding images is a more complicated procedure that I want to avoid in this assignment. Um, the best way is to like create your own images and put them in a folder and yada yada. I have tutorials on that, um, but just because the TAs involved in marking this assignment. I want to keep things simple, so I'm going to show you the easy way of adding an image, okay? Uh, and that is linking out to images that already exist on the web as opposed to creating your own images. So let's say, for instance, that I want to add an image of Virginia Woolf onto the first page of this uh, essay. All right, so I'm going to go into a new tab. It's really simple to do this, okay? Uh, it's by using HTML code for images. So I'm going to open up a new tab in Chrome and search for the thing that I want to look for an image for. So Virginia Woolf is the thing I want to look for. Uh, I'm going to click on the images tab and find an image that I like. And I want to put this image because it looks good. 
Um, there are copyright issues with using other people's images uh, if you are going to publish your Twine game, but since you're not publishing it, you're just making for a class, it actually really doesn't matter. So feel free to use any image you find online. So I want this image, so I need to grab the URL, the web address of where this lives. To do that, I'm going to right click on a PC or anyone with a mouse attached or on a Mac. I'm going to control click, i.e. hold down the control key and click and I'm gonna get this menu, and I'm gonna to go to here, copy image address, okay? Copy image address. That will grab the URL. If I were to open a new tab and just paste in what I just copied, I would see it's a, a link to an image, um, and it's the image that I want. All right, here's how you insert that image into your Twine game. Pointy bracket, IMG URL equals, or sorry, IMG SRC equals open quotation mark, then paste in, that's the thing that you just copied, then another quotation mark, forward slash, pointy bracket. Okay, this is an HTML tag. It's probably one of the most used HTML tags. Image source points to the source, which is a URL, space, forward slash, close. That is the HTML tag for that image. So when I close this and I start playing it, I will now see that image is part of my Twine game. Yes, if Wikipedia deleted that image or changed the URL, my Twine game would not work. But uh, hopefully the web won't change too fast. And when you make your, uh, between when you make your Twine essay and we read it, everything will be stable. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I've added an image, you could add more images. But for the purposes of this assignment, like I said, just use things that already exist out there on the web. Or if you really want, you can create your own image, upload it somewhere on the web, like on a, an image sharing site, and then link to that image. That'll totally work. That, but that's the only way that you can use your own custom created images for your essay. Okay, so I've added an image. Okay, let's say I want to add like a video. Okay, let's add a video of Virginia Woolf. Um, Let's say this, why should you read Virginia Woolf? Um, I believe the trick that I have here is only going to work for, um, for YouTube videos, but other, other, other video sharing sites will have some equivalent. So let's say I wanna put this video into my essay. Um, I'm gonna click on the share button here, and then I'm gonna click on this embed thing and then once I do that, I'm gonna get this, and this is a bit of HTML code that will allow me to embed this video into my Twine game. So just click on it, see how it, when I click on it, it selects it, and then edit, copy. So let me do that one more, one more time. I'm on YouTube, I search for anything I want, Virginia Woolf, hit enter, uh, click on the particular thing that I want to share or embed into my uh, into my Twine game. I click on share, I say embed, click on this link, and then I go edit, copy. All right, so now back into my Twine essay building thing. Let's say uh, on this passage, I want to stick a video in. So I would just go to a new line and then go edit, paste, and it's gonna paste in all that code that we just grabbed from YouTube. So now when I play my Twine game and I click on Born Digital Statement, at the bottom of that page is the YouTube video. And just, you know, they will click and, hey, you don't even have to watch the obnoxious ad this time. There it is. So that's all I'm gonna show you for here, putting in images and videos and feel free to include those. Feel no pressure to include them, but if they're gonna make your essay better, uh, go right ahead. And then that's something you can write about in your Born Digital Statement. I included images uh, and video, something that are difficult to do in paper-based essays, especially color images. Uh, videos are really quite impossible to include in a paper-based essay. Okay, so by this point, I'm expecting 99% of you to drop out, but that 1% who's really ambitious and really wants to do crazy exciting things, um, all right, come back to the syllabus and go to my beginner's guide to Twine. 
you are going to be well served by this, okay? I've made a bunch of videos over the years that tell you how to do relatively advanced stuff. Um, so the first one, passages and links, will all be kind of recap for you. But um, this, making your game look awesome with CSS, will all be new. Um, and it will tell you how to do, how to change the look of your game. Um, uh, and it'll go into some detail. So I'm not going to lay it out here. I'm just basically directing you to this video. But I will say one thing that's very important is if you're going to go this route, you need to change story format. So you need to click change story format here, and then you need to go into SugarCube 2.2. You'll notice right away that when you play your game, it has a completely different look. Different uh, story formats have different default views. Um, the thing, the first thing that you might want to do is this CSS business, which yeah changes the appearance. So for instance, you'll notice that now by default, when we play this game, the background is black. So if you follow my guide, you'll see that you can take some code here and put it into edit story style sheet. I'm now cutting and pasting from the keyboard for you advanced users. You know how to cut and paste. Um, and now if I go to play my game, I have a white background. This is the kind of power. Uh, Twine is great because it's, it uses these standard web languages, HTML and CSS to do crazy. Uh, advanced types of stuff. Uh, so, okay. If you were to do this, you're not breaking any rules. Uh, you're in this new story format. You're changing things and making them look great. You can still absolutely just do publish to file and submit it without any kind of special permission. But if you get further down into these instructions and you want to add your own images and music um, and you're uh, building a folder structure. If, as soon as you start building a folder structure, um, you got to talk to me. Uh, you got to email me and say, okay, I want to do a more advanced type of a Twine essay. I want to do the folder structure. I want to have my own images. I want to have my own music. Uh, and we'll talk and I'll tell you um, whether you can or whether you can't. You know, I'm probably going to tell you that you can. But uh, then you have to submit not just an HTML file, but an entire folder and a zip file on the submission page. But like I said, we'll talk. Okay, that's as far as I want to go with this instructional video. Probably lost most of you long ago, um, but that's everything you need to know about uh, submitting this assignment.